Tertullian was an early Christian author who lived in the Roman province of Carthage during the late second and early third centuries. The pagans of his day accused Christians of being sun worshipers because they observed Sunday, the day of the sun, known to be observed in honor of the sun gods. Here's what Tertullian had to say in book one of his writing known as Ad Nations. Others with greater regard to good manners, it must be confessed, suppose that the sun is the god of the Christians because it is a well-known fact that we pray toward the east or because we make Sunday a day of festivity. What then, do you do less than this? Do not many among you with an affectation of sometimes worshiping the heavenly bodies likewise move your lips in the direction of the sunrise? It is you at all events who have even admitted the sun into the calendar of the week and you have selected its day in preference to the preceding day as the most suitable in the week for either an entire abstinence from the bath or for its postponement until the evening or for taking rest and for banqueting. No matter how hard Tertullian tried to make excuses for Sunday, a well-known aspect of sun worship long before the time of Christ, it is doubtful that Tertullian had anything to say that would change the minds of the pagans in regards to the Christianity of his day. By that time, Christianity was far from the faith of the believers that walked and talked with Christ. The first century believers rested on the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week as specified in the fourth commandment, and not Sunday, the first day of the week. Today, there are many who would attempt to teach us that the fourth commandment should be disregarded, that transgression of one of the Ten Commandments no longer constitutes sin. Just as in Tertullian's time, they attempt by way of apologetics to explain, to make excuses for their contradiction of a commandment that our Creator wrote in stone. Will we accept such a contradiction, and if so, how much are we willing to compromise? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All ten commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and uprightness. Earnestly contending for the faith once delivered to the saints. I'm Richard Reeves with Just the Facts.